Hello and welcome to the Chapter 8 Workout Problem video. The first problem we're going to do is going to have us calculate the total revenue, the marginal revenue, total cost, and the marginal costs for each output level. So what, we, what you need to do is you need to build a table that kind of looks like this, right? Where you have your output in the first column, your fixed cost, which you can find up here in the uh, description of $20. They're going to be the same, of course, no matter what the output level is. That's why they're fixed cost. And we're going to have the variable cost, which is laid out in the description as well. We know that fixed cost plus variable cost equals total cost. So you do that at each output level. So that's kind of our cost side of things. Now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about our revenue side. So the revenue, the total revenue is calculated by taking our price. In this case, it's $20. And we're going to multiply that by the output, by the quantity uh, that we're outputting. Okay, so each of the output levels are going to be multiplied by $20, which is our price. And that is going to equal the total revenue at that output level. So we see our total revenue over here. Now we're going to do margins. So our margins, uh, I'm going to do this one in purple. So the margins are for marginal revenue, right? We know that marginal revenue equals the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity. Okay, so, and what that is for a perfectly competitive market, marginal revenue is also equal to the price. And so this is what it looks like. It's $20. At every output level, the marginal revenue is the price. Now the marginal cost is going to be the same kind of setup where we have the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. And quantity is easy for this one because really we're going from, we're at only adding one unit or having one additional unit of output uh, at each level. So the quantity in, in all of these cases is going to be one. And so really what we have to figure out is what is the change in cost as we go from one unit to two uh, or, or starting at zero, zero units to one, one unit to two, two units to three. Really, the answer comes in between uh, as we change. Okay, so here we go. Let's say, for example, we start at zero. What is our fixed cost? It's going to be 20. We're still going to have that no matter if we even produce one unit uh, or not. Variable cost is going to be zero. Total cost will be 20. So really what we're looking at here for the very first answer is we're saying, okay, we're moving at total cost from 20 to 40. So the difference is 20. Divided by 1 is 20. And then we do that all the way down. So the next one, we're going from 40 to 45. That's a 5. Uh, a change in 5 on the total cost divided by 1. Here's a change in 10. Change in uh, 15. And a change of 30. And that gives us our marginal cost. The final part of this problem that we're going to do is we're actually going to sketch out the curves, the total revenue and total cost curves, and the marginal revenue and the marginal cost curves. So let's go ahead and lay out our graphs so we can do that. And we're going to bring up our data here so we can have our data to show us uh, what to do. So let's do with the, let's do the horizontal uh, graph first here, or the horizontal axis. So we've got one unit, two, three, four, and five. So this is our output, right? Output. Then our vertical axis, we're going to have, it's going to be uh, in dollar bills here. It's going to be our costs, okay? And we're going to do this, let's go ahead and do this in $20 increments. So we'll do 20, 40, 60, 80. 100. And what we're going to do is we're going to have our uh, total revenue line. This is what we're going to have. We'll do that one in green. Our total revenue at the first uh, unit 
it's going to be a total revenue of 20. Second unit, total revenue of 40. Third unit, total revenue of 60. And we're going to go in this same pattern all the way through. Fifth unit, total revenue of 100. And what that really gives us is it's going to be all the way up from here. It's going to be a straight line, straight as we can get it. There we go. And that is going to be our total revenue line. Then what we're going to get here is, let's go ahead and draw our uh, total cost. So total cost is going to look like this. So at the first unit, it's going to be 40. Second unit is going to be 45. Third unit is going to be 55. Fourth unit is going to be 70. There we go, 70, somewhere in there. Fifth unit is going to be 100. So it's going to be a curve line that's going to look something like this. Okay. And really what we're looking for in this case to figure out what our total profit is, is we're looking for the point where the total revenue and the total cost lines are furthest apart. And that's going to be somewhere right, right in here, right? This is our max profit. Now we're going to draw the marginal revenue and marginal cost curves out and see if that gives us a similar type uh, situation. This is our total cost right there. And then our horizontal, we're going to do this a little differently because this is per unit, right? When we get into the margins and when we get into the averages, we're talking kind of on a per unit basis. So the cost is going to be laid out a little differently. We're going to do these in five. So we'll have five. We're going to do our marginal revenue. And that's going to look like this. At the first unit, our marginal revenue is 20. Second unit, 20. Third unit, 20. Fourth unit, 20. Fifth unit, 20. So really, our marginal revenue is a straight line across, a horizontal line across. This is marginal revenue, OK? Uh, which also equals the price. That's for a perfectly competitive uh, market that we're going to be doing that. Okay, now the next the next one we're going to do is marginal cost. So let's lay out the marginal cost here in red. And we're going to say, okay, the first marginal cost at 1 is going to be 20 right here. At 2 is going to be 5. So our marginal cost curve is sloping downward to begin with. Then it's going to start coming up at 10, and then at 4, at 15, and then 5 is going to be 30. Okay, so this is what our marginal cost curve is going to look like. It's going to look something like this going up. So that is our marginal cost. And let's see if it matches kind of up with what we what we wanted, right? So right here, right here, right in actually in between kind of, right around 4, this is where our profit maximization is going to happen. So this is max profit right here. And that does match up with what we were talking about over here in the total revenue, total cost curve. So there's two different ways to kind of tell where your maximum profit's going to be. And this is where it's going to be. And so kind of the rule is this. The rule is uh, the maximum profit is going to be where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Equals... Uh, but you, you, but definitely what you want to have is you don't want to have your marginal cost exceeding marginal revenue, right? So, um, so in this case, the output level that's going to give us our maximum profit is going to be at four. Once we hit five, that's going to be too much. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing for problem two. And I'll let you guys go ahead and work through this one and I'll just kind of show you the answer. So make sure you guys work through these before you look at the video. And then uh, when you do work them out, check back, you know, start the video again, whatever, and then it will let you know, okay, was I on, was I able to do it? And uh, that way I can do it for the exam or not. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay out here. I'll show you the marginal revenue and the marginal cost. Right, so that's kind of what they look like. Marginal revenue again is the price. Marginal cost is the change in total cost divided by the change in output. 
And now and we can even look at it on our data. We can say, okay, where is our profit maximization point going to be, right? So we're going to look in here at our marginal revenue equals but does not exceed marginal uh our marginal cost equals but does not exceed marginal revenue and that's going to be right in here right it's going to be right in here is where we're going to have our uh, profit maximization point right around uh, output of four again okay so then we also get a look at it and do our total revenue and total cost curves again I'll go I'll go ahead and draw them out and then you uh, compare yours to mine Okay, and so this is what the graphs look like. And so really what we're looking at here is we're, we're saying, okay, what is the profit maximization point? Does it match up with what we think it is? It's going to be somewhere right in here, right? So this is our profit maximization. It's going to be right, uh, it's going to be right at the fourth unit. It's not going to be at the fifth, so uh, uh, we really can't have half a unit, so we're really going to stick with uh, the fourth unit of output as our profit maximizing point. Okay, now the next problem that we're going to go through here, problem three, is going to be really just an extension. So we're going to graph multiple, uh, all of these other average cost lines and our average variable cost lines, along with our marginal lines as well, uh, to give us a feel for the shutdown point and the break-even point and all of those different different things that we can tell from these different uh, trends. And so let's go ahead and uh, and I really, you know, I encourage you to, to go ahead and calculate these on your own and then take a look at the video and make sure that you came close or not. If you have no idea of how to do it, definitely watch the video and it'll give you some guidance on how to proceed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the cost, right? So we have the fixed cost at 250. And that's going to be the same no matter how many uh, units of output that we have. And really the marginal costs then are going to go on top of the fixed cost to give us the total cost. Okay, so we know that the marginal cost for producing uh, the first unit is 700. So that's going to be our, our marginal cost, right? All of this right here, this marginal cost is all laid out in the information that we're given. Okay, one through seven. And what we, what we need to do is we need to take that marginal cost and we need to convert that back to what our variable cost is and add it to our total cost, right? Because this total cost is going to be fixed cost plus our variable. And the marginal cost will tell us the change in, right? So as we change, uh, we're going to be able to tell really what this, what this change is here. The change in total cost, right, is going to be that change. And we're going to add that to our fixed cost, and that will give us uh, our total cost. So we need to back up on that. We need to kind of do the marginal cost calculation in reverse to calculate our total cost. And then what we can do here, once we get our total cost, we can then uh, divide our total cost by the output level. And that will give us our average cost, right? Because average cost is total cost divided by output. Not change in, just the total numbers here that we're talking about. Okay, then our variable cost is going to be the total cost subtract our fixed cost. And then to get our average variable cost, what we're going to do is we're going to take our variable cost number and divide it by our output. Okay, and so there's all of our data that we've been given here. And really the tricky part is being able to take this fixed cost and the marginal cost data and then work ourselves back into the total cost. Uh, and that's A. That's, that's part A of the problem three. Now part B of the problem uh, is of uh, the problem three is going to uh, have us answering these questions. What price is the zero profit point and what price is the shutdown point? And for both of these, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at are the average cost first, and then we're going to look at the average variable cost. And we're going to say, okay, where does the marginal cost curve intersect these 
uh, the average cost curve and the average variable cost. And we see for our zero profit point that the average cost curve, so we're going to be looking at, at where the marginal cost is equal to our average cost. Okay, that's going to be our zero profit point. And we see that that is at uh, six units of output right here. They're equal at 450. Next thing we're going to look at is our shutdown point. And the, for the shutdown point, we're going to be looking at where marginal cost equals our average variable cost. When we, when we see that, we know that that point is our shutdown point. This is where we shouldn't operate any longer. And we see that at, see right here, so this is 400 average variable cost and our marginal cost is 400. Okay, so another way to look at this is we know that, that uh, so that, that's where our cost is equal, our marginal cost is equal to these average costs. And we know that the price, right, we're price takers in a perfectly competitive market. So if our price is equal to the marginal cost, then we know that that's where we're operating, right? Because that's exactly what the price is going to be in the market. That's where the market's going to be. Because we know, we also know that the marginal revenue equals the price, right? And we know that we want to operate at the point where marginal revenue or price is equal to marginal cost. So if that's really what we're going to be doing, then our marginal cost is, uh, curve is going to, where it intersects the average cost curve and the average variable cost curve, as it does that, we know that that is going to be our level of operation, right? Because our price is really driving us, right? The price of the market is really driving us uh, into where our output level is going to be. And so because the price is driving the marginal revenue, which is going to equal the marginal cost, hopefully at the, the most profitable point, that then tells us where we need to ha have a shutdown or where we're going to be operating at a zero profit point. So these are all connected. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to uh, assume that our price is 500. And then we're going to say, okay, what is our profit and our loss at that point? So let's go ahead and graph this out real quick. Let's start with our price. So right here, our price is at 500. So this, this right here is our marginal revenue. That's our price. Okay, so that's our price right there. This is our marginal. We're going to do marginal cost next. And that right there is our average cost. Okay, so here's average variable cost. Average variable cost. Okay. Okay, we know from these points really this is where our uh, shutdown point is right here this is our break-even point right this point right here is our is our profit max so this is shutdown this right there is break-even and this right here is profit max really the question is then is how much profit are we going to have at this point and it's going to be uh, the difference here between the cost or the, the price right here and the average cost. So that's going to be, that's going to tell us per unit what our profit's going to be. And so if we look at it in the actual, if we look at it in the, okay, so where are we going to operate? We're going to operate where our marginal cost equals marginal revenue and does not exceed it. So really we're going to operate right here at output of seven, right? So marginal cost equals marginal revenue, which is 500. Okay. So this is our marginal revenue or our price. So what we do to calculate the profit is we're going to take our marginal revenue here and we're going to subtract the average cost from it. So that's going to give us, uh, let's see, it's going to be 43. $43 per unit will be our revenue, uh, or our profit, I should say. So this here is our profit, profit, okay, profit per unit. And so then to get our total profit, we're going to take this 43 and we're going to multiply it by 7. 
and that will give us our uh, total profit. 43 is the per unit profit, and then as we multiply it by our output level, that gives us our total profit or loss. In this case, it's a profit. Okay, so what we're going to do with this one, this is just an extension. This, this is uh, part D of problem three, and now we have a different uh, price level. We have a different price level. So on this one, our price is going to be 300. So we're going to operate where price or marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So we know that we're going to operate right about here, right? This is 300. Okay, just like in our last one, we can say that 300, right, is our marginal cost, is our marginal revenue, and that our marginal revenue minus our average cost is going to give us our profit or loss. In this case, it's going to be a loss. We're going to lose $200, $200 for each unit. So it's $200 times how many units? Three, right? So our total loss in this case is going to be 600. And you can go ahead, I'll go ahead and uh, draw out the graphs for this one and we can see what this looks like. Uh, and really we're, what the next question is, is are we going to continue to operate at a, or are we going to be uh, beyond the shutdown point? And really what we're looking at at this case is we're looking at our average variable cost, right? And we will see that indeed we are below the shutdown point on this one. And so we're actually not going to operate at all at this price level. So we see here that we're, we're definitely operating below the shutdown points. Right here is the shutdown point, right? So this is shutdown. We're, we're operating below the shutdown point at this price level, so we're definitely going to be shutting down. Uh, we're going to be experiencing a loss and uh, of $600, and we're going to be shutting down. So hopefully this helps. Give me a call. Send me an email if you have questions. Thanks. Bye.